The bloodstones, with their deep green hue and striking red spots, were once believed to have the power to make people invisible. But is there any truth to that? And how are these unique gems formed? You're about to find out the mystery behind bloodstones. But first, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Bloodstone is a unique and fascinating gemstone that belongs to the quartz family, specifically a variety called Chalcedony. What makes it stand out is its deep green color with striking red spots that resemble drops of blood. These red markings come from iron oxide, the same natural compound responsible for creating rust. But how long has bloodstone actually existed? Well, much longer than you might think. Bloodstone has been around for millions of years. It forms deep within the earth under intense heat and pressure, and it takes a very long time to develop into the beautiful gemstone we see today. The conditions required for bloodstone to form have also existed for hundreds of millions of years, which means some bloodstones could be incredibly ancient. People have known about bloodstone for generations. It was highly valued in ancient civilizations, including those of the Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians. The Greeks called it heliotrope, which means sun turner, because they believed it could reflect the sun's rays. Some ancient cultures even thought bloodstone had magical properties, like the power to heal wounds or increase strength. Warriors in ancient times carried bloodstone as a talisman, believing it would protect them in battle. Even in the Middle Ages, bloodstone was still considered a powerful stone. Some thought it could make people invisible, while others used it in medicine to stop bleeding. But whether these beliefs are true or false, it's quite clear that bloodstone is one of the most remarkable gems in the world. Bloodstone's creation is a slow and fascinating process that happens deep within the Earth. It all starts with magma, the super-hot molten rock found beneath the Earth's surface. This magma carries important minerals, including silica, which is one of the main building blocks of quartz. As the magma cools, it solidifies into different types of rock. But the formation of bloodstone doesn't happen right away. Instead, it forms over millions of years through a process involving mineral-rich fluids. In certain areas, silica-rich water flows into cracks and gaps within rocks. This water carries tiny particles of minerals, including iron and chloride. Over time, these minerals start to crystallize and harden, slowly forming bloodstone. The deep green color comes from chloride, while the red spots appear when iron oxides settle into the stone's surface. This process doesn't happen overnight. It takes a combination of the right minerals, pressure, temperature, and most importantly, time. The red spots in bloodstone can vary in size, shape, and intensity. Some stones have just a few tiny specks, while others are covered in large, dramatic red patches. The way bloodstone forms can also impact its clarity and texture. Some pieces are smooth and solid, while others have tiny fractures or patterns inside them, making each bloodstone completely unique. Even though bloodstone takes millions of years to form, it can be found much closer to the surface today due to erosion and natural geological movements. Over time, wind, rain, and shifting land expose these hidden gems, allowing miners and collectors to find them in different parts of the world. So, every bloodstone you see has been on a long and incredible journey, shaped by nature for millions of years before finally making its way into your hands. Now, bloodstone is not just found in one place. It can be discovered in many parts of the world, but some countries are known for producing the highest quality bloodstones. One of the most famous sources of bloodstone is India, specifically in the Deccan Plateau. This region is rich in minerals and has been a major source of bloodstone for centuries. In fact, many of the most vibrant and beautifully patterned bloodstones come from India, making it a hotspot for gemstone collectors and jewelry makers. Besides India, bloodstone is also found in several other countries. Brazil is another important source, as its vast mineral-rich lands contain deposits of bloodstone. Australia also produces bloodstone, with some areas known for having stones with particularly bright red spots. Madagascar, a country famous for its diverse gemstones, is another place where bloodstone can be found. The island's unique geology provides the perfect conditions for bloodstone to form over millions of years. In the United States, bloodstone can be found in places like California, Oregon, and Wyoming. Although the bloodstone from these areas might look slightly different from the ones found in India or Brazil, they still share the same deep green color and red spots. Some collectors seek out bloodstones from specific regions because of their unique patterns and appearances. China is also known to have deposits of bloodstone, although they are not as commonly mined as those from India or Brazil. But regardless of where they come from, all bloodstones go through the same natural process to form, 
taking millions of years to develop their striking appearance. The fact that this gemstone can be found in different parts of the world just adds to its mystery and appeal. Whether you're in Asia, the Americas, or Australia, there's always a chance that bloodstone is hidden beneath your feet, just waiting to be discovered. Now, bloodstone is mined in different ways, depending on where it's found and how deep it is beneath the surface. In some places, bloodstone is hidden deep underground, so miners have to dig tunnels to reach it. This process starts with surveying the land to find areas rich in bloodstone. Once a location is chosen, miners create small tunnels or shafts that lead to the gem deposits. They use tools like drills, pickaxes, and shovels to carefully remove the surrounding rock and soil. Since bloodstone forms inside other rocks, it has to be extracted carefully to avoid breaking the precious stone. In other locations, bloodstone can be found closer to the surface, which makes mining much easier. Here, miners can simply collect loose bloodstone from riverbeds, hills, or exposed rock formations. This method is often called surface mining or alluvial mining. In these areas, rain and erosion naturally wear away the top layers of rock, revealing bloodstone hidden beneath. Miners and collectors can walk through these sites and pick up the best pieces by hand. But no matter the method used, mining bloodstone requires patience and skill. The raw stones don't look as bright or colorful as they do in jewelry. Instead, they're usually covered in dust, dirt, or other minerals. Once collected, the stones are cleaned and sorted based on their size, color, and quality. High-quality bloodstones with bright green colors and vivid red spots are the most valuable, while lower-quality stones may be used for carvings or decorations. Once bloodstone is mined, it goes through several steps to turn it into a beautiful gem fit for jewelry. The first step is cleaning, as raw bloodstone is usually covered in dust and other minerals from being underground or in riverbeds. Miners wash the stones with water to remove dirt, revealing their true colors. After cleaning, the bloodstone is sorted. Experts look at each piece and separate them based on their size, color, and overall quality. The best bloodstones have deep green colors with bright red spots. If a stone has a dull color or too few red spots, it might not be used for jewelry and could be carved into decorative objects instead. Next comes the cutting stage. Bloodstone is often shaped into cabochons, which are smooth, rounded gems without sharp edges. This is done by slicing the rough stone into smaller pieces and then using grinding wheels to shape and smooth them. Cutting is an important step because it helps bring out the natural beauty of the stone. Skilled gem cutters study each piece to decide the best shape and size, making sure to highlight the red spots in the best way possible. Once the bloodstone is cut, it needs to be polished. Polishing gives the stone a shiny, glass-like surface that makes it more attractive. Jewelers use special polishing machines with fine powders to smooth out any rough edges and enhance the stone's color and luster. Finally, the polished bloodstones are ready to be set into jewelry. They can be placed in rings, necklaces, bracelets, or earrings. Some jewelers even carve bloodstone into unique shapes or symbols, adding an artistic touch to an already beautiful piece. The finished pieces are then sold in stores or online, where they find their way to people who appreciate their beauty and history. As I have mentioned before, not all bloodstones look the same. While they all have the classic green color with red spots, the amount, size, and shape of the red spots can vary. This makes every bloodstone unique. Some stones have many bright red spots scattered across them, while others may only have a few, or the spots might be a darker, almost brownish red color. The intensity of the green background can also change. Some bloodstones are a deep, almost black green, while others are a lighter shade of green. The differences in bloodstone often depend on where it was mined. Indian bloodstone, which comes from the Deccan Plateau, is considered one of the best types. It has a deep green color with bright red spots, making it highly valuable. African bloodstone, on the other hand, can have unique patterns, sometimes with swirls or layers of green and red. Some bloodstones from Brazil and Australia may have yellowish or bluish green tones mixed in. Another variation of bloodstone is called plasma. Plasma is a type of bloodstone that has little to no red spots. Instead, it is mostly green, sometimes with small yellowish streaks or patches. While it doesn't have the classic blood-like markings, it is still considered a form of bloodstone and is sometimes used in jewelry or carvings. Collectors and jewelers look for high-quality bloodstones with well-balanced colors and patterns. Because the more vivid the red spots and the deeper the green background, the more valuable the stone is. Some people even believe that the red spots in bloodstone can form special shapes, like stars or animals, which makes them even more desirable. 
So, whether used in jewelry or kept as a collector's piece, each bloodstone is one of a kind. The natural variations in color and pattern make every stone special, ensuring that no two bloodstones are ever exactly alike. Now, bloodstone isn't just a cool-looking gem. People have been using it for centuries, and even today, it remains a popular choice for many different purposes. Of course, one of the biggest uses of bloodstone is in jewelry. Jewelers shape and polish it into rings, necklaces, bracelets, and even small carved pendants. The deep green color with red spots gives each piece a unique look, making it a favorite for those who love one-of-a-kind accessories. However, jewelry isn't the only reason people love bloodstone. Many believe it has special powers. Some use it in meditation, thinking it helps with focus and positive energy. Others say it can boost strength and courage, which is why some athletes and soldiers have carried it as a good luck charm even till this day. Some people even keep small bloodstone pieces in their pockets or homes, hoping it brings protection and good health. But whether for fashion or belief, bloodstone is still loved today for many different reasons. As you can see, bloodstone is more than just a beautiful gem. Its journey from deep within the earth to our jewelry boxes is a story of nature's artistry and human craftsmanship. Now, tell us in the comments, have you ever seen a bloodstone? What do you think about it? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel after dropping your comment, cause we've got plenty more content that reveals fascinating secrets about how things are made.